Hallelujah. So let's see the scripture before we pray. Let's see the scripture before we pray. Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. While our hand is still in 2 Timothy, let's go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 34 verse 3. For in the eighth year of his reign, he was yet young. He began, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father. And in the twentieth year, he began to pour Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the grooves and the carved images and the molten images. Father, we pray you breathe over your word in Jesus' name and it will transform our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. So let's go back to verse 1 of Second Chronicles chapter 34. Josiah was 8 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem 1 and 30 years. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of David his father and declined neither and declined neither to the right and nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, that is when he was sixteen, while he was yet young, he began to seek after God. After the God of David his father, and in the twentieth year he began to pour Judah and Jerusalem from high places and the grooves and the carved images and the molten images. Amen. Second Timothy. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Okay, we could see from those two texts we have read. In the first one we read, we saw Josiah. The Bible says, while he was young, he sought the Lord. And here is Paul the Apostle talking to Timothy too. While Timothy was young, he said, be strong in the Lord. So let's quickly look at, we looked at something like this in our Bible study sometimes back. And by the way, um, we are going to resume our Bible study tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. So we we'll resume Bible study tomorrow and there's going to be video on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Ah, nobody wants to clap. You want to say at home and we do it online church. No, come to church. If you don't come, I'll come to your house. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so I think the government has opened up the uh, places of worship and so weekly service can continue. Uh, Second Timothy says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So we, we, we saw this in one of our Bible studies sometimes back. What to do when you are young. So today the topic is similar though. But we are going to be looking at it from a new dimension. And that is what to focus on. Why you are young. What should you concentrate on? What should you be doing at a young period of your life. There are some certain wisdom that you can find in the Bible. And you know that the wisdom of God is bigger than the wisdom of men. At this period of our life, there are certain things that we are going to do that will affect our future. That is going to affect us when we begin to get ready to get married, to have children, and, you know, we begin to do so many other big things in life. There are certain things that when we focus on them, they make our life from those period better, stronger, beautiful, more than what we see in our parents' life. 
And so what are some of those things that God suggests in the scripture and that is very evident and we can see examples in the scripture? What are some of those things? But before I go to some of those things, I want to look at like three things that young people do at their youthful age that they should not be doing. Amen. You see, when you are young, that look, if you wake up by you are if you are writing an exam by let's say 8 a.m. and you decide to wake up by 10 a.m. and the paper is a one hour 30 minutes paper. They don't need to tell that person that he has failed. If you just wake up to failure. Praise God. The simple reason is because there is a time that you have to wake up to be able to write that 8 a.m. exam. It's just like we have in the life of the farmers. Um, there's a season to plant. Once you miss that season, you have to wait for another year for, for that season to come to pass. How many seasons do we have for maize in a year? I think we have, um, there's a rain in, Jar- in um, February, right? Ah, no agree person is here. How many seasons? We have two seasons. We have one later in the year. We have one early in the year. So you discover that if anybody fails to meet up with early in the year and late in the year, is going to wait for the next year. There are some things that if you miss them now, you can't do them again. No, you can't. No, you can't. I'm going to start with a story of a man that God gave a call to. I think he was 23 years old. He's a white man. And he said, God, uh-uh, I'm going to answer the call of God. God said, go to Africa and do mission work for me. He said, let me go to school first. He was done with school. And about five or seven years later, God came back. How about Africa? He said, God, you know what? I just finished school. I still need to put myself together. So that at least I can work, make some money, and support this thing you are saying I should do. He started working. Some years later, God said, what about Africa? He said, you know, I need to marry. So that I can have family I will take there. I can't go and marry an African. People, I don't know their culture. And then, some so many years, I think when he was in his 40s, God came back to him again. 47 or thereabout. How about Africa? He said, God, see, let me start the church here in America. And then when I start the church, I'll go to Africa. And the church will be financing the mission work. And when he starts the church and the thing is about to become very, just use like maybe eight years, the whole thing will scatter. And then he starts again, the whole thing will scatter. And he did that again and again and again and again and again. And when he was 75 years old, he was already very old. He can't talk for two minutes or five minutes without drinking water. He will cough, drink water. And then he came. And one of the people he met was one great servant of God. He met that man in the north. And he said, God has sent me to Africa. And the man, it was in Castina. The man said, God send you to Africa. 75 years old. <sighs> so, okay, what do you want to do? What did God send you to do? He wants to do crusade. Ah. The man gave him the support he could give him. And then they gathered the people they could gather for him to do crusade. When he wants to say, praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. Before he finished the whole of those things I said, he will cough, he will take water. And the man of God was praying, "Ah, Lord, don't let this man die in my house. I don't know why he's obeying you now. 
So after the crusade now, he now called the man of God, says, sit down. Said, I want to be sending money to you to support the work you are doing. But before I do that, I will tell you my story. That was when he started sharing what I shared with you. When that man of God finished sharing the story, he was saying in sad, ah, me, I don't want that kind of money. Oh. I don't want your own problem. Oh. Why? Because already he could see death on that man. Because as at the time the man came to Nigeria, God was already saying to him, then you should be ready to die. Because God expected him to live for that purpose. But at age 75, that's the point I'm going to. It was too late for him to do anything called ministry. Or anything called work of God. So there are periods in our life that it becomes too late to do some things. It becomes too late to pray some prayer. It becomes too late to take some action. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your life will not go late. And so, you see a lot of young people doing a lot of wrong things at their young age. Number one wrong thing, I said I'm going to mention three. Number one wrong thing that young people do while they are young is that they seek pleasure. They seek what? They seek pleasure. They call it enjoyment. It's not enjoyment. It's not enjoyment. They seek pleasure. They call it jaye orie. It's not jaye orie. They call it gyration. There's nothing to gyrate about. You are in the foundational period of your life. And there is an approach you must have to life. Amen. And so you see that a lot of people that are young, they engage in pleasure. And some of those pleasures they engaged in destroy their lives. All that some do is to take a lot of alcohol, take a lot of um, hard drugs, go around with their peers, and just waste away. Not knowing that time is life. So, number one major thing that a lot of young people do while they are young is they seek pleasure. You can't seek pleasure and have a great future. And I want to share with us a story from the scripture to buttress that point. Um, that story, it's about one of the, one of the, uh, will I say what? The only daughter that Jacob has. You know, Jacob has 12 sons and one daughter. For those of you that don't know, Jacob had a daughter. But the daughter decided to allow her life to be destroyed with pleasure. And let's go to Genesis chapter 34. We want to see dinner. Dinner that became a dinner for boys. Where Jacob packed to. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bore unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when she came, the son of Hamron, the Evi, the prince of the country, saw her. He took her and lay with her and defiled her. Amen. Seeking pleasure. Seeking pleasure. At the young age of Dina, they just move into that place. If you read chapter 33, the last scripture there, the last verse there, you will see where the Bible was saying that Jacob bought a field. The reason why that was told to us was because the Bible wanted us to have a picture that they were new in that place. The custom requires that you sit at home. 
You don't know the environment yet. And so you see verse 1 saying that she went out. Meaning that she, okay, let's go over it. Verse 1, chapter 34. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, which she bore unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Praise God. And so you discover that she was trying to look at, you know, what is in town. They don't want me to go out. They don't want me to see what is going on. Amen. My father, my uncles, my brothers, they are saying, sit down at home. I won't sit down at home. I will go out. And the Bible reported that in the process of going out, it ended her life. You don't seek pleasure and have a great future. The two does not go together. You don't seek pleasure while you are young and have a great future. It doesn't work that way. And when I say pleasure, I mean things that people do that are detrimental to their life. They take um, hard drugs in the name of pleasure. Take alcohol in the name of pleasure. Take things that are destructive in the name of pleasure. Of course, pleasure does not mean when you are relaxing. It doesn't mean when you are trying to be good to yourself or take care of yourself. Pleasure means doing wrong thing and thinking it's enjoyment. You know, people's thinking has been distorted. And what is bad becomes, they give it a good name. You can't be seeking pleasure. Seeking what will destroy you and have a great future. You can't be smoking. You can't be doing some certain things that are destructive to you and call it pleasure and have a great future. Number two, you can't have wrong friends and have a great future. One common thing with young people is that they move in peers. Young people are friends. But let me tell you, you can't have wrong friends and have a great future. When you are young, one thing that will be common with you is that there will be so many people that will be your friend. Now, your best friend in primary school is no longer your best friend. If you are in that shoes, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The same thing in secondary school. That's how it happens. When you get to the university, at a certain period of your life, there will be somebody that you are very close. And after a while, you will not be very close again. They were relevant for that season of your life, but they are no longer relevant. So you see young people seeking friends. They want to, most especially, if you come from a home that you have not been loved, you want to look for friends that will love you. You want to look for people that will say, I like you. You want them to recommend you. You want an approval, an endorsement from them. And sometimes, those people are wrong. And when you walk with wrong people, your life will go wrong. Amen? So you can't be walking with wrong people and your life will go right. So you need the right people so that you can have a right life. You need people that are correct so that you can have a correct life. Young people are set of people that cannot do without friends. It is, it is hard for you to see, um, young people that are melancholy. I mean, people that keep to themselves and they don't have any friend at all. When people are young, one common thing is that they used to have friends. They will have like a best friend, somebody that they talk to, somebody that they gist with, somebody that they open up to, like their friend, like they are so intimate with. 
when you are young and you have a wrong friend, your life is already in the wrong direction. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 13. Sorry, chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs 13 verse 20. I want us to read it in good news. Can we have what the scripture says there? Okay, nobody's reading for me. Okay, if you listen to advice. No, not 1920. 13, 1320. 1320. Keep complaining with why, with the wise, and you will become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you will be what? So somebody can keep friends with stupid people. So what the Bible says is that be deliberate about the people you select as friends. Be deliberate about the people you take on as friends. On your WhatsApp, on your Facebook. Everybody cannot be your friend. Be the one that will select your friend. Don't let your friend select you. That's what the Bible is saying. He says, can we have another version? Let's just look at another version. Okay? Okay? So, he that walks with the wise shall be wise. But the companion of fools, dull, weighted fools, we experience harm. You cannot have wrong friends. And have a great future. When you have somebody that anytime you see her, she's always talking about her boyfriend. That's your best friend. Always talking about her boyfriend. You know what will happen to you? You will have one very soon. Why? Because that is what he's always talking about. What the boyfriend bought for her. How the boyfriend kissed her. What the boyfriend, how the boyfriend touch her that very soon. And you say, I'm going to job. Your own is numbered. It's just a matter of this. You can't have wrong friends and your future will be great. No. So you have to be deliberate about the friend you will have. If you have to start declining their cause, you have to take note of that. If you have to keep a distance, you have to take note of that. If you are going to have a future that is great, you need correct friends. Amen. Amen. There's a guy in the scripture. He came to one of the sons of David one day. That one said he wanted to lie with his sister. His name is called Abinadab. How can you lie with your sister? He said, eh, you know, it's not my mother that gave birth to, to her. He said, I know, but it's your father. He said, eh, I just want to lie with her. And in fact, I'm running crazy now if I don't lie with her. He said, okay, I will teach you what to do. See, bad friend. <coughs> and eventually, told him, you will pretend as if you are sick. You will tell your daddy, let my sister Timna serve me. She's the only one I want. I don't want any other person to serve me. I used to like her soup. And so, that was what happened. So, he was, I guess he was shaking on the bed. And David, his father, said, what is the problem now? So, just let my sister serve me pepper soup. She's the only one I want. I don't want any other sister. Eh? So he okay, serve him. And then when that one went to serve him, he locked the door. Do whatever she wants to do with the lady. The lady came out crying because he disvagin the lady. Eventually, the elder brother of that one had. The name of the elder brother is Absalom. Said, eh, you did that to my sister. The daughter of my mother. No problem. They kept quiet. After like three years, that one threw a party for all the king's son. 
from all their mothers. When they were about to do, the reason is to kill that guy. And he was carrying that for about two years to so three years. So when they were done, he just moved close, kill him. And everywhere, scatter, everybody ran away. They said, ah, what happened? What happened? They said, the king's son is dead. Absalom killed the king's son. So Absalom that killed him ran away. Do you know when the person that went to report to David? It was this same Abinadab that told him, pretend as if you are sick. I went to tell David, ah, they've, they've killed him. Oh, yeah. The king's son is dead. There's nothing we can do. Can you imagine? Wrong friends. Wrong friends. They are cancer to the bone when you are young. Once you have them, there's no future. Friends can introduce a man into what he will not do ordinarily. And some of those things can destroy. You can't have an unbeliever as your best friend as a believer. You have to be selective. You have to be what? Selective. Selective. So if somebody wants to be your friend, you have to say, ah, sorry, we need to sit down and talk about it. Whether I will accept you as my friend or not. Is that serious? Because the moment I say yes to you, you are going to affect my life. So, Young people move with peers. And if you move with the wrong person, it's definitely going to affect you. Amen. Another thing that young people do that can destroy their future is laziness. While you are young, if you are lazy, it's going to affect your future. Lamentation. Chapter 3, verse 27. Lamentation of Jeremiah. Lamentation of Jeremiah. Lamentation is after Jeremiah. Chapter 3, verse 27. It is good for a man to bear the yoke of godly discipline in his youth. A man should be Bear the yoke, the burden, the weight of making himself discipline in a godly way while he's young. You discipline yourself. I'm not going after girls. A godly what? Discipline. I will read my Bible. A godly discipline. So when you are young and you are lazy, you will not be disciplined. You will just flow with the time and tides. When you are young and you are lazy, you will prefer to sleep more than to do things that can help your future. When you are young and you are lazy, you don't have a future. There is no excuse, sir. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 6. Anybody that is young and is lazy does not have a future. Proverbs chapter 6. You can't be young and you are lazy. The Bible says the glory of young people is their strength. So if the glory of young people is their strength and someone is lazy when he's young, then that means he's wasting his strength. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the hand, thou sluggard, consider our ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided a meat in the summer, and gathereth a food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise from thy sleep? So sleeping and laziness goes together. If you are sleeping without control, then you should watch it. 
That's a sign that you are lazy. Amen. One of the things that work does to us is that it builds discipline in us. If you are going to office, you wake up, you shower, you dress up, you go to work. You come back, you repeat the process. So when you want to go out as an entrepreneur, when nobody is monitoring you, you discover that that life is already built into you. Some people cannot be entrepreneurs. Why? Because they don't have enough self-discipline that drives them to wake up in the morning and go to work. They behave like the boss when they're supposed to behave like the employee. They want to get to... You know what? Bank CEOs, they stay late in the bank. In fact, around 2 a.m. is when some of them goes to the, go back home. So when you see great institutions, you just think, ah, this guy is sleeping at home. He's waking up at this time. No. Why do they have drivers? They have drivers because it allows them to think. So mentally, they are working hard. They are late to bed. They are early to rise. If you see top people in the bank, they are usually very, very hardworking. Because one of the things that bank does for you is that it stretches you. That money you think they are paying you, they will collect it from you. You can't collect free money. You will work. They will give you targets. That's why I always like people when they start their career with banking. By the time you have used like seven years in banking, and you want to go and start your business. I don't need to be doing seminar for you again. You are okay. You wake up at the right time. You do everything at the right time. Your business will move. If it doesn't want to move, you will push it. Why? Because for over seven years, they stretch you. You have to give reports. You have to do Monday presentation. They have a deadline you have to meet up with. And all of these things, they are like on your neck. No breathing space. Amen. Amen. And when you start out with that kind of life, it makes you to work at your maximum capacity. And that's one of the things that work does to us. So even if you are not working in the bank, whatever you are doing, you have to make sure that you are using your maximum capacity. Work yourself. Do your best. So the Bible says here that a lazy man is always sleeping. A lazy man is always giving excuses. The Bible said, um, the lazy man said there's a lion in the way, there's a lion without. I shall be slain. What that means is that is giving excuses. The Bible says he turned upon his bed like the inch of a door. So I've slept with this side. I've not slept with this side today. This one has done two hours. Let this one do... No, yesterday this one did three hours. I have to pay back. Three hours. So let me start. Turn to that side and start sleeping again. Say, okay, I've done this side, done this side. Let me lie down straight. Ah, it's been long I've slept with my face down. Let me do that style too. Turn you upon the bed. Like the inch of a door. That's what the Bible says. Though. You can't be lazy as a young person and have a great future. So, but what are the encouragement of the scripture? So, let's jump over there. What are the things that God expects me to do? While I am young... What are the things that God expects me to do? So we go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 34. And what does the Bible says there in verse 3? He said, For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David. Number one thing that the Bible expects you to do while you are at this age is to explore God. Is to do what? Go deep. 
go inside and research deep into God. You can't go wrong doing that. Explore God. And you know that that's what a lot of young people don't want to do. They don't want to explore God. They just want to stay at the surface. When you explore God, what happens to you is that you come to realize that God is inexhaustible. This was the same opportunity that Solomon had when he was young. You can't explore God at a young age and remain the same. Look at the life of David. David was young and he was always seeking God. Always seeking God while he was young. See what happened to his life. Always. So, bro, Timothy now said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1, he said, thou my son. He said, why you are still my son and you are young? Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak in the Lord. Be strong. For somebody to be strong in the Lord simply means, oh, please, can I have the cord of this laptop? So, for somebody to be strong in the Lord, it simply means that he should take time to take in all he can get from God. Now, why do you need to be strong in the Lord? There are some situations in life that will appear as you are growing up. It is your internal strength that will carry you externally. Amen. That's why you discover that when people grow up and they've not explored God, they will go to herbalist. Amen. You, many people may not tell you. Many of them, they may not say it out, but a lot of people go to herbalist. It's a normal thing for them. Even people that go to church, they go to herbalist. Why? They are not strong in the Lord. There are situations you will see in your life <coughs> that will require that you are strong in the Lord. There are situations of life that will come to you and it will be like, hey, what is my life turning to? And it is your being strong in the Lord that will carry you through. While you are growing up, you might not see some of those kind of situations yet, but those kind of situations are part of life. And when you are strong in the Lord, you have already, you have already um, how will I put it now? You have already congealed before the situation comes up. You have already cured. That's the word. You know what, what we did yesterday? We put sand plus granite plus iron plus uh, block and uh, filling sand and everything together, isn't it? And when we put all of those things together, we allow it to dry up. They call it kill in engineering. They say you allow it to kill everything to become together such that you can't separate it again. You have already become strong in the Lord. And I think because of my time, even though I have quite a number of points here, I want us to look at... Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Be rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Number 8, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, and vain the seed after the tradition of men, after the redoment of the world, and not after Christ. That is deep. And I think we just have to stay there and then go to pray. So the Bible says you should be what? Be deep. Be rooted. What does the word root mean? If we look at a root, the root is that thing 
that contains the life of the plant. Esa, if a plant is going to have one million fruits, it is inside the root. Am I communicating? Okay, let's, let's, let's wrap up this way. Let's just look at three things about the root. We, we don't, we are not going to have time to dissect that, 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 those two scriptures. But let's just, let's just pick some things and then look at three things about root. Number one is that root contains the life of a plant. The life of a plant is inside where? The root. So, the leaves that comes out from a tree. Amen. Amen. The leaves that comes out from a tree is from where? It is the root that we draw something from the soil. Isn't it? And then it will pass it out. The leaf is what you can see. The fruit is what you can see. But if the root is dried, the leaf is off. If a tree has 1,000 fruit, is the root. If a tree has 10 fruit, if a tree has no fruit, is the root. The root is the life of a tree. So, if you are going to cut any other plant from part of the stem and you are going to plant it, the root will first come out. The plant you got will wither. Isn't it? And a new one will do what? Because the root has to be formed first. You cannot form an external life that is strong without a strong root. It said be rooted in him. Let him supply all the strength you need. Be rooted, 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 rooted. So you see a tree. Some Morocco tree has been there for years. And let me give you one of these business ideas. I'm sure that one day it will be useful to you. One of the easiest way of making money eh, is that you buy, you go to areas that most people don't want to come to yet. The land will still be selling very cheap. You buy as many as possible. And you plant trees there. Or you allow trees to grow there. Then you can put your barricade. Just leave, just leave the trees. Or deliberately go and get seed of big, big trees planted there. Why? That's timber. That can take care of like two to three generations. You just buy that land. The only thing you are allowed to grow there is just timber. You are not going to cultivate it. You are not going to cut grass. Just plant the tree there. Once the root is strong, grasses are wasting their time. They are doing what? Then you have it there and then those people that used to sell plank, they go there fall the tree. There's an amount you sell each of those trees. The tree grows again and then takes it out. So they will just, they won't uproot it. They will just cut it on the head. They have this machine. They, they cut it on the head. They slice it into plank. They take it away. You allow it to grow again. And then you can repeat that process. It's a business strategy that a nation like Nigeria is supposed to get involved in. Why? Because 99% of Nigerian land, or 9% is arable. What it means is that anything you throw on the Nigerian soil grows. And there are many places that are not developed in Nigeria. So one of the things the government should have encouraged is to look for places that are not yet developed. Make a policy for you to be able to get a loan from the bank to have a timber forest. Because timber is a great money spinner for nations. And nations that they put out only based on wood. And Nigeria made a lot of money in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. 
No, not seven, it's sixties. With timber. So, and to do timber farming, you don't need anything. Just have the thing there. That's all. That's all. Just go and be doing whatever you are doing. The trees are big and you can just line them up. Just set a row. For those of you that went to a nice primary school, nice one, you will see trees the way they are planted. I don't know whether you have, you know, they were, they were deliberate. You see a tree here, see the next one here, see the next one there. I don't know how many of you have noticed something like that. You can be deliberate like that. Amen. Haven't said that because timber business is a serious business. Um, timber business has the capacity of giving you a return of about 5,000 to 9,000% return. That is, if you put 100,000 there, you should be able to go home with about, um, about, uh, close to 9 million. That's how powerful timber business is. But it's quite stressful. It's quite stressful. I'm just trying to let you see, you know. So, but when I'm talking about timber now, I'm talking about rooted plants. So, when the Bible used that word, be rooted in him, built up, that is, while you are young, one of the major things you should focus on is how to put your roots inside Jesus. You put your marriage inside Jesus. You put your career inside Jesus. You know, when you see a root, you will see different lines. Have you? Your career, your marriage, your talents, your giftings, your abilities. Everything that is inside you, you begin to plug it into Jesus. Be rooted in him. Draw strength from him. There are roots that are called tap roots. You know, tap roots, usually, like carrot is a root. I'm sure you know that. Carrot is a root. You know, it's usually having a shape like this. Something like that. So, but it's turned upside down if it's in the head. So, when you put it down like that, it has so many other sides. Okay? There are some small, small roots are coming out. That tap root is a big root that has small, 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 small roots. Be rooted in him. So, number one thing about root is that is the life of the plant. See, don't come out and be showing. No. Be rooted in him. Let your root produce the showing. And that takes me to the second point. Number two thing about root is that they are beneath. They are not on the surface. They are in the secret. They are not on the surface. Root are what? Beneath. They are, they, you can't see roots. It is leaf and fruit you can see. Roots are usually inside secrets. So when the Bible says be rooted in Christ, what he's saying is that there are some things you do in secret as your walk with Christ that it will show forth outside like the leaf and the fruits. But what you are doing inside Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. I think this explains it better. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. I think I should read from verse 1. Take ye that you do not do your hands before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thy harm, do not sound a trumpet. Before thee as the hypocrite drew in the synagogues and in the street, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 3, but when thou doest harm, 
Let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Verse 4. That thy arms may be in secret. There are some certain life you have to live in the secret. That your hand may what? Beware. In secret. Let us see another thing the Bible says should be in secret. So, go to verse um, 5. And when thou prayest, <coughs> thou shalt not be like the hypocrite, standing in the synagogue and in the corner of the street. Don't pray for the microphone. Don't pray to be seen or shown. That's what Jesus is saying there. That they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is where? In secret. So, where should you do prayer? So, secret. The root is in the secret. You can't see the root. To live a strong, prayerful life in the secrets. He said, go to thy closet. Now, let me describe closet to you. Closet is common in America. It's not common in Nigeria. You know, these days, the type of house they build here now, small, small house, self-contained room and parlor, and they will call big amount of money for you. But in U.S., we used to have houses that comes with closet. Most houses most comes with closet. Closet is like a place where you just have the whole house, a small portion like a store or where you put dirty clothes and when you want to wash them you can go there, pick it and do your laundry and whatever. It's just a small place. Sometimes it's not really the store. Just that small place. It's like that. A place that is eating. You will not even know it's a part of the house. So the Bible says, go into thy closet. And what we know as closet here in Nigeria is our cupboard. Praise God. You know, my son asked me one day, he said, Daddy, the Bible says we should go into our closet. Should I go inside the cupboard to pray? <laughs> I said, no, sir. It's just saying that you should pray in the secret place. <laughs> Amen. Go and pray in the secret. Your prayer life in the secret should be hot. That's what the Bible is saying. I want you to look at something. Look at something. So that's the root. When thou prayest, go into thy secret and pray. And let me read verse 6 again. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is in secret, see it, which see it in the secret, shall do huh? That's the fruit. That's the leaf. One of the best things you can do for yourself. When I became the senior prefect of my school, in SS2, I came home that day. I came to pray. And I was there for hours. You know when somebody becomes senior prefect and is not born again, you know what he will do? He will go and drink and play with his friend. No. I went home. Because it was after school. I was reading in the I was reading in one of the classes. And while I was reading one of the classes, the teachers were having a meeting with the principal. And they were discussing about who to select as the senior prefect. I mean, I was just doing my reading. All the students have gone home. And then they came to call me. That they want to see you. And then when I got there, I saw all the teachers standing with the principal. And I was just reading after school. So, you know, I'm, I was not supposed to, I was, I was not, I was, I don't even know what was happening. And so before I know what was happening, they brought me to the assembly. I have about 4,000 students in my school then. And they say I was a senior prefect. 
I went back home and I prayed and I prayed. I was soaked. I can't remember how long it was for. But I knew that that day God helped me to touch heaven. Because I know that that particular day or that particular job was very important in my destiny. Now, what am I trying to say? You know, if I have not been praying before, the next thing that came to my mind after I've been selected as the senior prefect will not be to pray. It will be to maybe enjoy myself, be jumping about. But I see that something more serious. And so, I know that my strength is drawn from that place. Even as a young person. And that's the point you should come to. Draw your strength from the place of prayer. It's very critical. Rooted in him. So that you can bear fruits. And you can show leaves. That people want to associate with. You know there are some certain leaves. That you see today. And you will pluck the leaf. Because it's useful for you. People like some plants. Because they are very good. But it's the roots that did the work. If you have a bad prayer life in the closet, the outer life is going to be affected. You can't have a strong prayer life and it will not manifest in the open. Your father that see you where? In the secret. Will reward you where? That's the fruit and the leaves. I want us to develop an inner life that is strong. Roots are usually hidden. So how is your sick life? What do you do when nobody is there? How do you pray? How do you study God's word when nobody is there? It's going to affect the type of life that will come out. How long do you stay with God? How long do you stay with your phone? Your secret life. How does it look like? The Bible says there is nothing that is eating or done in the secret that shall not be made manifest. He that dwell in the secret place of the most high, thy father which is in secret so God stays in the secret. David was groomed in the secret. You cannot become the man that can kill Goliath in the public. The public is not the place that makes you. See, sometimes I don't want, I don't, I don't give some of you opportunity to come to the pulpit. Why? I'm, I'm trying to save your life. Because your inner life, I can see that it has not been formed. Not because of hatred. It's because if you are exposed too early, there is no plant that is root is exposed that will not die. If you are exposed, death is coming. And that leads me to the third point. There is no root that changes location and becomes a great tree. No root. Have you seen a plant that after being planted for six months, now say, ah, this ground there, I don't like it at all. The heat is too much. Let me now leave this look with you. I want to move to Banana Island. The way people are mashing me here, they are not mashing me with respect. Mm. And then you see that type of plant becoming a... Mm. You can't see great thing coming out from a root like that. Why? Anytime a root is uprooted and taken to another place, it starts afresh. Or anytime a plant is uprooted, taken to another place, it starts afresh. And that is talking about consistency. 
is in the secret and is consistent. It's just there. Ten years from now, just there. You don't build a great life from the outside. You don't build a great life on Facebook. You don't build a great life on social media. You build a great life in the secrets. Amen. I was opportune to speak to over 5,000 managers a couple of times before the total lockdown. Nigerian Institute of Management. And one day I was speaking to them. You know, they usually invite me like that again and again. And I was feeling like vomiting. So I knew it was an arrow. So I knew that was not ordinary. So I was just looking at somebody that does that kind of thing with just human experience and PowerPoint. They are actually up to 10,000, but I just cut it to 5,000. So, when you are standing before a lot of people, there are different kinds of people you are talking to. Some of them have demonic spiritual power. They look at you, size you up, fire an arrow. They want to bring you to a disgrace. But when you build a strong life in the secret, it helps you in every area of your life, whether it's secular, whether it's spiritual, whether it's career, whether it's business. Not everybody you are working with is going to be born again. And let me tell you, when people are not born again, they easily go to our bar list. The only thing is that they don't tell you. They may not be going there every Sunday, but they go. And sometimes, when they feel like you are blocking them or they are not comfortable with you. They may want to test something on you. Don't think people are ordinary. I was talking to somebody and he was sharing his experience with me. They transferred him to a bank. Sorry, he got a job in a bank and he was transferred to a nearby branch over here. I won't mention the name of the bank. So they used to have marketers meeting on Monday. Banks used to have a lot of meeting and, you know, the guy is always locking down his locker. So one day he forgot to lock his um, table and he discovered that even though this guy is putting on tie, putting on suit, everything is sharp, there are several Fade Yoluru inside him. Many of the top directors in many of the big organizations, they are in court. Because many of the people they are leading that are staff in the bank, they are seniors in the dark spiritual realm. And if they don't join anything, they deal with them. But you don't need to join anything. All you just need to do is build a strong root inside Christ. If you look at that H in him, that him, the H that started is capital H. Be rooted in Christ. Root is not seen on the surface. What are you doing in the closet? Root is, is not changing location. You have to be consistent. Root contains the whole life of the plants. Everything people will see, let it be produced from your closet. Amen. I meet a lot of people. I meet a lot of people. And because I meet a lot of people, there are people that have money and they got the money from the devil. And sometimes when I'm talking to some people, God tells me some businesses not to do. I've had people that send us mail and say, I want to do this and this with you people. And people in the office will be telling me, ah, yes, sir, there's this particular business. There's this particular mail. And I said, don't mind that person. We are not doing that business. God is not leading us that way. It is out of the root that you have that things like that comes from. So how, how is your secret life? He said, be rooted in him. Built up. Established. 
how is your secret life? You will be praying and you will sleep off. Eh? Sleep off. Your saliva has tear your Bible. So when you are coming to church now, you are bringing phone. Because you don't want pastor to see that your Bible is torn. When you are reading John chapter 7. Every time, okay, we agree that there are some times you pray and sleep off. But must it be every day? Now you ask, and when you wake up, you just wake up to go and shower and then you continue life like that. No! What the Bible says, if you continue in my word. So if you are reading the Bible and you sleep up, wake up, continue. If you continue in my word, that's what the Bible says. There are ye my disciple indeed. Or is, is it not continue, he said? So you wake up and continue. Amen. You should live a strong spiritual life. A life in the secret with integrity. What you say is what you do. Not somebody that is something else in the secret. We should be able to leave you with money that has not been counted and nobody is there. We should be able to leave you with a lady in the room and our mind will be at peace. Not that we will send a small boy to go and be checking you. What are you doing? It is the strong inner life that produces the outer life. How is your life when nobody is there? So if you are going to do something great in life to build that closet, you need to build that root. Be rooted, built up in him. Let's see verse 8 of that scripture and then we'll go to pray. Okay, while that is taking time, let me open here. Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So the Bible says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And that's talking about the fact that you must be grounded in the world. Do all manners of prayer in your closet. Do all manners of fasting in your closet. When nobody is there, White fasting, dry fasting, wet fasting. Nobody is seeing you. You do all kinds of prayer. Pray with all kinds of prayer and supplication. Take time to study the word. Don't let the philosophy of men disturb you or scatter you. No. What is philosophy of men? What men philosophize what they think should be the right thing. Somebody is coming up and saying marriage does not define you. When the Bible says it should be one man, one wife. And when the Bible does not encourage you to marry an unbeliever and somebody is telling you philosophy about that. Somebody is telling you about the fact that you should not love your wife and your wife should not submit to the husband. And he's telling you, love each other. Behave the same way. Those are philosophies of men. What they think is true. He said, when you are rooted in him, one of the things that is going to happen to you is that you will not be moved by philosophy of men. You will not be living your life according to the trend. Some people are always looking for what is trending. They are moved by what is trending. What is trending is what is directing their life. If you are going to have a great future, you have to be rooted. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So look at David. David was young. He was always seeking the Lord. He was only in the wilderness. And he's always there praying. Psalm 23 came from there. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me to lie down by green pasture. See, that psalm was produced when David was a shepherd boy. It was that strength he carried. And he faced Goliath. And he brought out Goliath. If you are going to conquer the Goliath of life, you need strength from the secret place. And if this is the only thing we can say today, I think it goes a long way. You see a lot of young people in the scripture that grew in the secret. 
and become a mighty oak tree for God. How is your growing? How are you faring in your root? Are you rooted in him? There are plants that just started growing and you can just uproot it. But there are plants that have become like a roko tree. You can't uproot it with one hand. Machine can't destroy it. If they try to bring bulldozer, it's going to fight bulldozer. Even the whole of the root will not. I don't know whether you have seen plants like that. I've seen plants like that. Consistency. Staying there. Staying there. That's how to produce a great life. That's how to produce a great Don't live your life by trial and error. This is what Bible has recommend. Be rooted in him. In the secret, study the word. In the secret, pray. In the secret, fast. In the secret, do a lot of things that will make your life productive. If you want to become great in any career, you build it in the secret. You are writing a professional exam and you carry books that if we are going to consider the height from the floor is as high as this. Carry the book, some on your left hand right, some on, and then you have like 5,000 on your iPad. Books. Carry it to example. Will that intimidate the exam? Or the examiner? Or the exam paper? And when they ask you, what happened now? I want to show you how a professional behaves. No. A professional sit down in a secret and read. When he has consumed all those things, he just goes with his pen and few things and go and write that exam. I need you to see that life. The life of, you see, I, I see that young people like to give special number. Even when the number is not special, it's a general number. They want to hold the microphone. And I'm like, what is inside of you that wants to hold the microphone? That thing needs to go. Must you hold the microphone? Don't you know that the longer you stay in that place, the better your future becomes? There's no exposed roots. That becomes a great plan. None. No. You don't find exposed root becoming a great plan. No, it doesn't happen that way. And you see some, when they don't allow them to do special number, they don't allow them to do anything, they say they want to share testimony. Just to hold microphone. Must you hold microphone? Amen. If you allow me, eh? If you allow me. I brother pref prefer to stay where I just come out once a while. I'm telling you, uh, Larry King used to be one guy on CNN. He used to do a lot of interviews. One of the people he interviewed was uh, Billy Graham. I'm sure you know Billy Graham. Now. And then he asked Billy Graham, what is it that you love love to do more of? If you are to be young again, said I will have love to stay more in God's presence than the crusade, than the showing forth in different events. Thy father that saw you when you were praying in the secret, he will carry you out. When you are cooked. Amen. Don't be among those set of young people. That just want to show. Amen. They just want to show. I must show myself. I must show myself. Amen. Some people join. Usher. Sorry. Some people join ushers to, to show. At least if they don't allow me to do anything. If I join usher. No, I will stand there. If the head of shall say I should stand there, I will come to this place and stand. So when they are seeing pastor, they will see me too. And when they have seen my front, I will turn my back like this. I have to show. Amen. There is that thing I want to show in young people. 
Some people say, hey, while well, I'm doing that, I'm developing myself. Um, forget that thing. Forget that thing. That's a self-deceit. When your inner life is strong and you come out once, people will always ask for more. But when you don't have any content and you just want to show something, it will just be like a passing here. They will remember. And it will even help you. Because people like to deceive people. They will tell you, that was a great performance. Even though they know it was not a great performance. They are deceiving you. They won't tell you that. I'm telling you, ah, I, 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 I love the way you sang that song. They are deceiving you. I'm telling you. So as a preacher, if you listen to radio very often, one common thing they used to deceive presenter is doing a wonderful job. If your brain is not working as a presenter, you say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What wonderful job are you doing? You are just talking normal things. They say you are doing wonderful job. What is wonderful in that one? I, I, I love the job you are doing. You are doing a great job. You are not doing any job, sir. You need to understand that the life that people want to see is not the one you used to build yourself. You don't need to bring yourself before people. I'm, 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 I'm so, I don't know why the Holy Spirit brought this up, but I could see that, um, the Spirit of God is emphasizing on it. So please, let's read the scripture. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. I think I'm right. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. And the child grew and worked strong in spirit. And he was where, sir? Esa, on the stage. He was holding microphone. He was uh, on all over the place. He was in the desert. Until what, sir? There is a day for your showing forth, sir. Go and become strong for the day of your showing forth. Go and become strong for the day of your... There is a day your showing forth is going to sh- come. Hey, Amen. That's when you thought is going to come. Just calm. Just calm. You're showing what is coming. Until the day of his showing forth. God spoke to Elijah, hide yourself. And at another time, show yourself. There's a day of your showing forth. Don't struggle to come and lead prayer and then impress the pastor. No. It's a wrong way to live. It's a wrong mindset. Don't come and struggle to preach. It's a wrong mindset. I see a lot of young people. They've been doing it since I was young. And I'm, I'm like, there was a time that special number thing was so rampant. I don't know whether it's still rampant now. They just did all those special number stuff. And somebody will come out. And say, I have a special number. And when he comes out and he will say, praise the Lord. This special number is so special to me. And as you listen, God bless you. And I look at, I say, Jesus, Jesus. Is this how we are going to, why are we wasting our time? In fellowships. Why? Is this what we are supposed to be using our two hours to do? I say, God bless you. For this special number. What's the special number? Onisha Iyan. Oh, Jesus. I will just say, Jesus, Jesus. I thought this sister just got a special number from heaven. Jesus. What is this now? And then he will say, everybody stand up, sing with me. And I'm almost like, please, can you drop the mic and get out of that place? Amen. There's a showing forth time. The secret is where you draw strength, where you draw energy. In the name of Jesus, receive grace to grow a strong root in Christ in the name of Jesus. I want you to stand to your feet. We want to pray. And I want you to come against everything in your life that likes to show. Amen. 
Praise God. That thing that